Another concept on Alex regarding rational functions is to be able to choose a graph that matches a rational function. Um, so we have here two different equations and we're going to match them up with the graphs that we have. Um, you can see here that all of these have two vertical asymptotes. So when we have two vertical asymptotes, our middle is either going to be even or odd. If the middle is even, then the function won't cross the horizontal asymptote in the middle. So it's either going to be a parabola looking function in the middle that faces down or maybe it'll be facing up. If it's a parabola facing down, then the other two pieces are going to be above the asymptote. They're opposite of the parabola part. Another ki kind of function you could have would be an odd function in the middle. An odd looks like a cubic function, so if it crosses the asymptote in the middle and looks like this, then the other two pieces will look like this and this. And this picture can be reversed, just like the parabola one can. So you can have it being odd going the other way in the middle, and then the other two parts will be like this and like that. So let's look at the first function, 5 over x squared plus x minus 12. Let's figure out the location of the asymptotes first. Um, so for this graph, I need to um, find the vertical asymptotes. So the vertical asymptotes are where I need to set this denominator equal to 0. And it does need to be factored in order to solve. So since it's x squared, I'm going to do two groups. I get my x and my x. I need two numbers that multiply to make a negative 12 and add to give a positive 1 in the middle. So I'm going to do positive 12. Nope. Let's fix that. I'll do that down here. So two groups, x times x. <clears throat> we need two numbers that multiply to give a negative 12. So one is positive, one is negative. And add to give a positive 1 in the middle. So my choices can be using 3 times 4, and since I want it to be positive 1, I'm going to do positive 4 and negative 3. So the vertical asymptotes are going to be located where we find these solutions for these groups. If I set them equal to 0, I get x equals negative 4, and x is positive 3. So I'm looking for a function that has a vertical asymptote at negative 4 and also at positive 3. So right now my choices would be Oh, let's see. So it doesn't look like A has that. Well, maybe it does. That looks like a 2 there. So A has it at negative 4 and 3. B has it at negative 4 and 3. C as well. Um, D does. Nope, D has it at negative 3 and 3, so not D. Um, if you look at E, it's located at negative 3 and 3, so it's not E. And on F, it's the same thing, negative 3 and 3. So this G of X function is either going to be A, B, or C. Um, let's figure out the location of the HA now. So for the horizontal asymptote, we compare the degrees. If the top degree N is less than the bottom degree M, Y equals 0 is the horizontal asymptote. If the top equals the bottom, then it's y equals, and you d divide the leading coefficients. In this example, the top degree is x to the 0, since it's a constant term. The bottom degree is 2. So this is a case where n is less than m, so it should graph a y equals 0 asymptote. So right now, graph a has that y equals 0 asymptote. Graph b also has it. The graph C has it at negative 2, so now I've eliminated graph C. Okay, so now I need to figure out, it looks like, is it even or odd in the middle? So, and it looks like they might have um, an intercept graph, and that can really be helpful if I know where my intercept is. So let's go ahead and figure out for this graph, what is the x-intercept going to be? So the x-intercept is where we set the numerator equal to 0. So for this graph, the numerator is 5, and if I set 5 equal to 0, that's a no solution. So this graph has no x-intercept. 
Well, if I look at graph A, this has no x-intercept, and graph B does have an x-intercept. So it looks like graph A should be the correct answer. So how do we know it looks like a parabola in the middle? Well, it has no x-intercept, and let's um, test to see if the graph can cross the HA, because graph B crosses the horizontal asymptote. So if I set the equation equal to the horizontal asymptote, I'll see if there's a point of intersection at it. So 5 over x squared plus x minus 12, let's let it equal 0, since that's the horizontal asymptote. We cross multiply, so I get 5 times 1 is 5, 0 times anything is 0, and again I get no solution. So the graph does not cross anywhere on the HA. So graph B is definitely eliminated because it's crossing the horizontal asymptote. Uh, so I've figured out that it must be graph A for this first graph. Okay, so now let's look at the second equation and find the information for this equation. So I'll leave some of this up here since it's helpful to look at. And I have, and I know that, you know, it can't be A, but maybe it could be some of the other ones. Okay, so the second equation, let's look at the asymptotes for it. We have 2x over x squared minus 9. So the vertical asymptotes come from the denominator, x squared minus 9. We set it equal to 0. This is a difference of two squares, and it factors as x plus 3 times x minus 3. So I have two vertical asymptotes at negative 3 and 3. Well, we know it's not A, B, or C because those were located at negative 4 and 3, so it's either going to be D, E, or F. They all have the vertical asymptotes at negative 3 and 3. So now let's find the horizontal asymptote. This is 2x over x squared minus 9, so the top degree is x to the first power and the bottom degree is x squared. The degree is the highest power for x for your function. So this is a 1 over a 2, so the top degree is less than the bottom degree, so this is another y equals 0 asymptote. So it could be graph D because it's got the horizontal at 0. It cannot be E because that's located at negative 3, but it could be F. So it's either D or F. Both of these have odd functions in the middle, so I'm assuming that the graph is going to cross the HA, but we can also prove that. Okay, so let's figure out for this graph what our intercept is. So the x-intercept is where we set the numerator equal to 0. So 2x equals 0, divide by 2, you get 0. So I have an x-intercept at 0, which graph D and graph F have. So now let's see if the graph crosses the asymptote. So set the equation equal to the horizontal asymptote and cross multiply. So I have 2x times 1 is 2x and 0 times anything is 0. If I divide by 2, I do get a solution. I get x is 0. So yes, the graph will cross at the ordered pair of intersection 0 comma 0. That's x, h, a. So it crosses at 0, 0, which is proven on both of these graphs. So really, the only way I can pick between D and F is I have to figure out which way the middle is going. And the only way to really do that is to plug in a point so that I can see which direction I have. So I'm going to look at the middle and the, between the asymptotes negative 3 and 3, I have some numbers that I can plug in. I'm going to plug in positive 2. So if I check on the x-axis at 2, then that's going to let me know when I get that point which way the graph is going. So go to your function and evaluate it at x equals 2. That means plug in 2 for the x's. So you get 2 times 2 over 2 squared minus 9. So I get 2 times 2 is 4, 4 squared minus, or 2 squared minus 9 is 4 minus 9, which is negative 5. So I have a point located at 2, comma, 
negative 4 fifths. So which of these graphs has a point at 2, negative 4 fifths? And that's going to be graph F, because if you look at where that point is located on the curve, it's definitely down there. So graph F has the function going in the correct way, and then the other pieces are just going to be that, that's the way they are when you have the odd function in the middle. So the graph for 2x over x squared minus 9 is going to be graph F.